Hello and welcome to another edition of The Morning Brew live on NTN. My name is Jesse Leons. We're coming to you from the Government Information Service Studios. And today, Monday, the 14th of September, we'd like to welcome you. We'd like to thank you so much for making The Morning Brew your wake-up program. And uh, if you're here in St. Lucia, resident of St. Lucia, looking to keep abreast of what's happening uh, coming from the Government of St. Lucia here on Ireland, uh, welcome to you. Uh, St. Lucians in the diaspora, we all always love when you are, are watching in and keeping abreast as to what's happening from your home country and also well wishers globally a special good morning to you as well on air online we thank you so much huddle up if you're at your office if you're at home right now just getting about the day's business thank you so much for just uh, stopping by to get the latest updates we have a few updates coming from the Ministry of Health and Wellness mobile blood donation services at government buildings uh, on ongoing availability for PCR COVID test for travel purposes. We know if you have to head, if you have to leave the country or come back into the country, uh, what's the deal on the PCR COVID-19 test and also the test being available at the respiratory hospital. We have some updates on that coming from the Ministry of Health. Also, uh, Invest St. Lucia continues to promote economic progress through land development. Also, new sporting facilities are months away for residents of Miku and consumers to receive refunds for recalled coconut oil. So these are the uh, latest updates coming from the government of St. Lucia. We, we know of the uh, recall on the coconut oil. We're hearing now from the Ministry of Commerce that uh, there will be refunds uh, for the consumers, individuals who made purchases of these uh, products, but the bad batches of coconut oil. Uh, we will be bringing you the latest details uh, to these stories and more coming up after this break. Uh, we also, uh, this weekend, we had the, uh, the second uh, series, the second episode in a series of poetry live uh, showings. That's part of the National Arts Festival uh, Art Reach showings uh, virtually. It's being held in a virtual format this year, the National Arts Festival. And uh, this weekend, they did feature uh, Miss Atkinson, uh, Catherine Atkinson. Uh, we did have her on Friday sitting in to tell us what we could expect for a uh, Sunday night. And it was uh, just as wonderful as the first episode with uh, Gina McPhee. So if you haven't had yet, yet had the opportunity to take a look at the Art Reach episode so far, uh, when this program is done, we encourage you to take a look right here on the NTN Facebook page and or YouTube channel. So stay with us. When we come back, we have the latest details to these stories. And also we're hoping to speak to uh, Mr. Andre Joyeux from the Met Office on the latest inclement weather that we've been experiencing, what it means for our island. Stay with us. She's been watching, waiting, wondering when the sands of time will give way to a tide of change and for yesterday and today to become a new tomorrow, for a time when her son can kiss the cheeks of your loved one and her stars can twinkle in her honeymoon skies, when her earthly embrace will reassure and calm your soul. risen to meet new challenges and to provide safe harbor to all who reach her shores. For her hopes and dreams still stand shoulder to shoulder, a precious reminder of experiences yet to come. So wherever your moments and memories take you, let her sense of adventure set you free.
Sint Lisi ka registre vers min corona et qui ka fait mouvement et quand chai vitesse tan chaque canef ka kouye pour vigilance publique là fait wolou parler en place publique qu'on bol en main base ti boutique changer distance sociale six pieds Rodionalot, il ka travaille tan si ou santi ko pa cordial quarantine ko pa twa en contact et pi lot en ka ou te twa pe exposé c'est un nekouye free one one au ben n'importe clinique yo pe ou les pays a di mi a clé ça vle di les supermarchés pharmacies et pi ATM yo accessible avant cette soir Pays à clé en plein, ça veut dire tout bagaille fermé à 24 heures. C'est vu protocole comme sorti par bureau indication santé. Nous tout ensemble, ça sauve vers mine corona. Si nous tout servi jid là à toutes les. Thank you so much for uh, staying tuned. If you're just joining us, a special good morning uh, to you. Uh, we are the Morning Brew live on NTN right now, bringing you the latest news coming from the government of St. Lucia. We have three updates uh, coming from the Department of Health and Wellness, and it has to do with mobile blood donation services and the PCR COVID-19 test for travel purposes and its availability at the respiratory hospital. I'll start with the mobile blood donation services at the government buildings and just to read out for you the st lucia blood bank service informs the public of the disruption of blood donation services at the owen king eu hospital on monday september 14th 2020 persons wishing to donate blood on that day can visit the mobile blood bank at the government buildings waterfront castries from 9 a.m to 12 p.m Mobile blood donation services at the Owen King EU Hospital will resume at uh, from 1 p.m. The St. Lucia Blood Bank service apologizes for any inconvenience caused to our donors. We look forward to continue providing quality blood donation services to our clients. That's the first release. The second, availability of PCR COVID-19 test for travel purposes. The Ministry of Health and Wellness informs the general public that for persons traveling outside of St. Lucia and requiring a PCR test for COVID-19 can access these services at the Grosley Polyclinic or the Viewfort Wellness Center. Swabbing for the PCR COVID-19 test will be available at the two centers on Monday to Friday at 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. The cost of the PCR test is U.S. $100 or 267 EC dollars uh, to be paid at the Grosely Polyclinic or the Viewfort Wellness Center. Uh, persons are also advised to walk with a valid form of identification, that is your ID card, when accessing services at the Polyclinic in Grosely or the Wellness Center in Viewfort. It is recommended that persons come in at least three days or 72 hours before their scheduled travel date. All persons coming to conduct business at the uh, Ingrosole or the Viewfort locations must wear a mask before entering the premises, the facility. Uh, all hands will be sanitized with an alcohol-based solution. The Ministry of Health will continue to take the necessary measures to ensure the health and safety of all staff and patients during the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, if you want some more information on the testing prior to travel that's available at the Grosley Polyclinic as well as the Viewfort Wellness Center, you can contact the Ministry of Health at 468-5309. 468-5309. And the final release coming from the Ministry of Health and Wellness, PCR test for COVID-19 at the Respiratory Hospital. The Ministry of Health and Wellness informs the general public that for persons traveling outside of St. Lucia or undertaking elective surgery, a PCR test for COVID-19 can 
access those services at the respiratory hospital that is formerly Victoria Hospital and swabbing for the PCR test will be available every day at the respiratory hospital from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. The cost of the PCR test is 100 U.S. dollars uh, or 267 EC dollars as I mentioned earlier to be paid at the respira respiratory hospital. Uh, persons are also advised to walk with a valid form of identification that is your ID card when accessing these services at the respiratory Hospital and the Owen King EU Hospital. Again, we remind persons that all individuals who are coming to conduct business at the, this facility, the Respiratory Hospital, must wear a mask before entering the facility. Al hands will be sanitized with an, al an alcohol-based solution. The Ministry of Health continues to take the necessary measures to ensure the health and safety of all staff and patients during the COVID-19 pandemic. Again, if you want some more information on the on uh, this uh, PCR test for the, at the respiratory hospital, the PCR COVID-19 test at the respiratory hospital, you can call 4586500 or you can email vh at govt.lc. That is vh at govt.lc. Uh, this morning, I just want to bring you news of Investor St. Lucia continuing to promote economic progress through land development. We've been hearing a lot of talk, a lot of news, a lot of following up and following through uh, from Invest St. Lucia on their pledge. Invest St. Lucia has officially cut the ribbon at its prized Beauchamp land development in Miku. The project forms part of the agency's goal of creating 600 new landowners in various communities island-wide. Uh, Invest St. Lucia has been looking into developments that explore options such as multi-family offerings in which persons can purchase uh, the unit within a duplex or an apartment complex at a lower reasonable cost. Uh, this includes the Beauchamp land development which has been designed for both residential and commercial use. Alyssa Joseph has a report on this ribbon cutting which took place uh, last week. That was uh, Thursday, 10th September. Take a listen. The Bowshop ISL. Another two playing fields under the National Sports Infrastructure Program are into the final. Invest St. Lucia, the ISL, has launched the Beauchamp development in keeping with its mandate to utilize state assets to create attractive and accessible opportunities for St. Lucians to become landowners. The Beauchamp land development project is 80% sold and comprises lots ranging from 4 to 12,000 square feet. Roderick Sherry is the Chief Executive Officer of Invest St. Lucia. This Bosha development comprises 59 fully serviced lots and they are a combination of residential and some commercial property. The sizes range from 4,000 to 12,000 square feet and they are reasonably priced at $12 a square foot. A land development like this is crucial to Miku's growth and development as a self-sustaining community. Home and business construction helps to generate more jobs that are community-based. It can also have a trickle-down effect on other industries such as retail, manufacturing, agriculture, and the services sector, thereby bringing economic stability to communities. This can have a direct and positive impact on the lives of our citizens. The Bosha project was announced by the ISL along with a number of residential and commercial land developments. However, the onset of COVID-19 delayed plans. But this has not deterred us. In fact, the challenges posed by the pandemic have made ISL even more determined than ever to push on. This is because it has underscored the importance of St. Lucian's owning property assets, including a home, which is much better than having to deal with the uncertainties of living in rented accommodation or squatting on untitled lands. This proves that our decision to put more St. Lucians on the path to land and home ownership was a right one, and it was very timely. Mr. Sherry says government and the ISL are working towards diversifying the local economic landscape and reducing poverty. And such projects are designed to create new neighborhoods away from the congested north of the island. Prime Minister and Parliamentary Representative for Miko South, Honorable Alan Chastney, says the constituency is ripe for this new development thrust. To facilitate this, there have been upgrades to the water supply and distribution network and further investments in facilities and infrastructure. We're opening up very soon a new water park 
um, for the kids, which will include swings and slides um, and a canteen and a recreational area for adults, as well as a, a water park uh, feature. Um, we are fixing up the football field in Deriso and putting an AstroTurf facility and just not too far from here in the Miku, near the Miku Secondary School, we're also putting in an AstroTurf um, football facility in that location. And why is that important? Because we recognize that Miku South is becoming uh, a suburb, a suburb to, to View Fort. And while we may not have as much economic output that we used to have here, I think that persons who are going to be moving to the South, and yes, you did hear me right, persons who would be moving to the South from the North, and that is already starting, um, we're hoping that they're going to choose Miku South as their choice destination. Prime Minister Shastny says the time has come for Senusha to benefit from a more thriving construction sector where contractors are better empowered. So when we came in as a government, we had to figure out a mechanism as to how to develop these kinds of investments without overburdening the state. And so the, month, the land was already in Invest St. Lucia, and Invest St. Lucia was able to identify a contractor that was willing to come in and put down the facilities. Government supported it by providing incentives um, to that contractor to be able to lay down the infrastructure. And then as the lots are sold, both Invest in Lucia and the contractor now are reimbursed. We've also added now an additional incentive. And that additional incentive is if a contractor from this constituency or in the neighboring constituencies has the capacity to go out and convince five of the new landowners to build and gives them a design of a house and is able to get five other um, homeowners to agree to join in government will give that contractor incentives. Invest St. Lucia is spearheading similar projects in Boisjoli Miku and Lafag Chozel. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reports in. Thank you for that report, Lisa. And we just want to let you know that later on in the broadcast, we will be hearing from Mr. Andre Joyer from the St. Lucia Metro Meteorological Office. And he'll be speaking to us on the inclement weather that we experienced uh, yesterday. And uh, just giving us a general status update on what we can expect going forward as we are within the hurricane season, the Atlantic hurricane season. Uh, meanwhile, rehabilitation works on the sporting facilities in the Miku area are nearing completion. We have the details in this report from the Ministry of Youth Development's Ryan O'Brien. Take a look. Another two playing fields under the National Sports Infrastructure Program are into the final phase of their rehabilitation, with completion estimated to be within a couple of months. Construction manager Dominic Matra says the turf for fields at Miku and Deriso will be laid once a leveling machine currently in operation at the Sufre Mini Stadium becomes available. Presently, Miku is only ready to take the final grid with a lay of small stones. We have all drainage and everything is in place and the turf. So we are hoping that is after that is we have done Sufre, in, which we will be starting around the 10th of September, we will be moving to Deriso and very far to Miku to do that turf area. So therefore, this will be the Miku plane field. Also, you see that if we have done what we call the fencing, and we're on the last stage of the fencing of the Miku plane field. So therefore, everything is going well with the, with the project, and therefore we are hoping that is we will get to the end by the end of October. We're going to have a swimming pool, we're going to have the information of basketball court, and, and also multiple centers. We also have produced what we call a, a five-a-size sand plane field at our back, so therefore we, all, we have all of these as, uh, facilities around. And as we put those things, we are going now to look at the stands and what kind of seats we are going to put in. Work on the Deriso playing field is at a similar stage. And Matre was quick to point out that there will be a special cooling system that will regulate the temperature of the field. People are saying that the field gets hot, but we have actually added new technology to, that, to, that, to, the, to the turf. A cooling system that will be coming in with the field. To regulate temperatures as the temperature rises, it will release moisture to cool down the field. But this is the Deriso field. It has gone through the system, it is ready to receive the turf now, as you could look at it. It is final, the final grading has been done, and therefore we expect actually that is by in the next few weeks' time that the turf will be on, the, on that field. But also on that field, also with that program, we also we are refurbishing the, the multi-purpose court which we have up there. 
that is, we are going to resurface it, put new lighting, and so on. We have also we also created a small fiber side field on the side there, which we're going to have. But also we have fencing going on. So if you look carefully at what we have at the back, we have what called the retaining wall being fixed. According to Matre, the dimensions of the Deriso playing field have been extended to provide a minimum FIFA-sized football surface. It will be the main field in the community. Phase two of the project will provide changing room facilities for players and portable seating will be installed to accommodate spectators. From the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks for that report, Ryan O'Brien from the Ministry of uh, Youth Development and Sports, uh, talking to us on the rehabilitation works on sporting facilities nearing completion in the Miku area. We are due for a break at this point. You are watching The Morning Brew. Do stay tuned. We have more details and updates coming from the government of St. Lucia after this break. coronavirus have in common of love both are highly contagious spread love not the virus like you COVID-19 loves a lime beach river or fed coronavirus is like these people who track every lime just to invade the best way to put off invaders cancel the lime spread love not the virus Keep you and your crew corona free. Live to lime another day. Together let us win this war. Say you shall be a soldier. Together we can beat this corona. Overnight, growing national a unrest. Society, a digital cashless it's society. Not one world want. currency. A vaccine which has for COVID-19. Drop it to the virus. The coronavirus. In this constantly changing environment, resulting in sensory overload, cut through the noise and tune in to the National Television Network, the official source of information, all facts. What's in the food you're eating? Do you really even know? All the chemicals and hormones used to accelerate their growth. All the artificial flavoring, sweeteners and colors too. We consume and we don't spare a thought for the damage that they'll do. The that no, they do. think about the children. Think about the children. How will we save them? Chemicals and GMOs are not the solution use organic and join excessive agrochemical use additives and genetically modified foods are harmful to health and the environment join the good food revolution grow buy and consume organic a message from rise st lucia and the ministry of sustainable development with funding from the gef small grants program undp the good food revolution Thank you so much for staying tuned. You're watching The Morning Brew live on NTN. Uh, we continue our coverage uh, for of activities for a Suicide Prevention Month this September. Health authorities continue to call on all members of society to play their part in uh, reducing this incidence. We have more in this report from Fernell Neptune. As part of observing World Suicide Prevention Day on September 10th, the Ministry of Health hosted a Suicide Awareness Symposium at the St. Lucia National Mental Wellness Center. The symposium provided an opportunity for mental health professionals to share ideas and knowledge to help achieve the goal of preventing suicidal behavior. Principal Nursing Officer Glenda Sipal says, everyone can make a difference 
to assist others who have reached the point of wanting to end their lives. Preventing suicide is often possible and you are a key player in its prevention. You can make a difference. As a member of society, as a child, as a parent, as a friend, as a colleague, or as a neighbor. You can raise awareness about the issue, educate yourself and others about the causes of suicide and warning signs for suicide. Show compassion and care for those who are in distress in your community. Question the stigma associated with suicide suicidal behavior and mental health problems and share your own experiences. CPAL also called for the collaborative efforts of every one of us to prevent suicide. We must endeavor to develop evidence-based suicide prevention activities that reach those who are struggling in every part of the world. Joining together is critical in preventing suicide. Preventing suicide requires the efforts of many. It takes family, friends, co-workers, community members, educators, religious leaders, healthcare professionals, political officials, and government. Suicide prevention requires integrative strategies that encompass work at the individual, systems, and community level. World Suicide Prevention Day is observed under the theme, Working Together to Prevent Suicide. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fennel Neptune. Thanks for that report, Fennel. And to let you know, last night we had another episode of the uh, Art Reach, the National Arts Festival Poetry Live episode, and it aired last night. The uh, Cultural Development Foundation is putting on the Art Reach National Arts Festival in virtual format, and in this uh, series, uh, they are featuring uh, poets, women poets, lady poets, female poets, and the work that they're doing in St. Lucia, as well as marrying it with a little bit of our uh, culture here in uh, the city of Castries, what the, the streets mean, what the atmosphere, how the atmosphere influences our, our um, artistry in St. Lucia. So uh, just to go to the report that we aired on Friday because we did speak to the feature poet from last night, Ms. Catherine Atkinson, and she did speak to us about what we could expect and what her work was like and who she is really. And also we also did speak to the director at the Cultural Development Foundation, Ms. Drinia Frederick, and she spoke on you know the rationale, the refreshing and captivating elements of the production that feature not only female St. Lucian poets, but also the essence of Castry City and its creative influence. And the Poetry Live we had last night, uh, we do hope again you can take a look at it in your spare time a really engaging really captivating content coming out of the CDF but in the meantime we have this report on what the, uh, the, the this production is all about take a look poet and playwright Catherine Atkinson will take the art reach stage this weekend in another spellbinding episode of poetry live voices of the underground this 30-minute program is the second of a series as part of the ongoing National Arts Festival Atkinson gives a glimpse of what viewers can expect on Sunday night. So one piece is a, a, a suite of poems called Tomas, which are a reflection on the landscape um, and the experience mm -hmm. of, of Hurricane Tomas. 2010. Yes. And, oh gosh, was it that long ago? Yes. My goodness. Um, and then another piece is also landscape inspired. It is called... Um, uh, I don't know what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> but it's, it's, that's about, okay. Um, it's about uh, sort of the Easter season and the Kawem sort of oh, nice, landscape. Nice. And, uh, and, the, and the, the, the narrator or the speaker in the poem is, um, you know, is, is cooking um, her, her Good the Friday mm -hmm. um, meal. And then another piece, which is a little bit more personal, um, is uh, just a reflection on, on identity and connection, again, to the landscape and the culture. Um, 
So I don't know if that's sort of what you were... It, it's sufficient. <laughs> I, I think we have a teaser for your, your display or oh, showcase. Oh, I so yes, I think we yeah. could go to it now to give persons yes. a greater understanding of what you will be bringing to us this coming, this coming Sunday. Great. So let's go to that right now. We'll come back to the interview. Okay. After the betrayal, the quiet pain of disbelief. And in the void, a heavy, wet silence. Everywhere, everything bore the marks. Atkinson is also author of Requiem for a Bad John, a place set in an inner city community in Castries. Popularized in 2017, the play was performed to sold out audiences at the National Cultural Center. The Cultural Development Foundation has been deliberate in casting only female poets in this Voice of the Underground series. Director of Events and Production is Drinia Frederick. Within our sort of um, anthology of literature, there has always seemed to be a highlight of the male counterparts. Um, mm. I, I just throw a few names out there and everybody knows Walcott, Lee, O.G. And you have these women who are writing and the work is just as formidable. Um, you have new writers as well. And we felt that let's do this first series highlighting six dynamic St. Lucian poets. And let's do it spanning several generations. So if you notice, um, Gina is of that younger ilk bothering on millennia and then gradually it builds. So you have this pan to show that this sort of rich element of literary work done by women in St. Lucia. The Poetry Live series also features various aspects of St. Lucia's capital and influence from many local writers. This is captured in the theme, Voices of the Underground. When we walk around any major place in the world where art and something revolutionary in art, in music, in, in drama, in theater has developed. It has come out of a sort of an urban context, mm -hmm. a roughness of the city. If we look at Steel Pan, where did that develop? It didn't yeah. come from some high fluting area. Um, so within that sense, that sense of castries, people see castries as rugged, people are moving around as commerce, but that city has a sound. And it is also the voice of these artists that are coming out of it. The new episode of Poetry Live, Voices of the Underground, will air at 7 p.m. Sunday night on NTN, HDS, and Calabash TV channels. From the Government Information Service, Rajvaro Lawrence reporting. Thanks for that report, Roger Varro, and we definitely encourage you to uh, catch up on uh, that episode aired uh, last night, the latest episode of uh, the Poetry Live Voices of the Underground series as part of the National Arts Festival Art Reach. We are due for a break. When we come back, we speak to the director at the St. Lucia Met Services on the recent inclement weather we've been experiencing as just and as well as just a general status update on the weather systems that will be affecting us as we are in the hurricane season so stay tuned for that update we also have uh, the update from the ministry of commerce on the assured refunds that will be given to individuals with who have bad batches of the uh, magic coconut oil stay with us Let us win this war. We are 
For further information, please contact the hotline at 311 or the Bureau of Health Education at 468-5349. Thank you so much for staying tuned to The Morning Brew. We're now in our final segment for the morning. And the, just we have an update coming from the Ministry of Commerce before we get to Mr. Andre Joyer to give us uh, an outlook of the weather. The Ministry of Commerce, International Trade, Investment, Enterprise, Development and Consumer Affairs informs the public that on September 8th, 2020, the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards issued a release to the public on the withdrawal of batches of real refined coconut oil and magic refined coconut oil. The batches that have been deemed non-compliant with the compulsory national standard SLNS 25 2017 specification for coconut oil are as follows. That is real refined coconut oil BN037, BN039 and BN040. Magic refined coconut oil BN030, BN036, BN037 and BN040. Consumers or small businesses that have purchased these products from the above mentioned batches are asked to stop using the products immediately and return them with your receipt where applicable to the retailer or wholesaler where the purchase was made for a full refund. Please note that the refund is on partially used or unopened bottles. That is an update coming from the Ministry of Commerce, giving the assurance that you will be refunded for these bad batches of coconut oil. And finally, for the morning, uh, we uh, would have experienced over the weekend some inclement weather Sunday afternoon. Uh, for those of you who heard the thunder rolling and that was the onset of some rainfall yesterday, um, we do hope that during that time you kept safe. But we are speaking now to, we have on air, online, uh, the the director of the St. Lucia Med Services, Mr. Andrew Joyer, to give us an update. Uh, what did we experience yesterday? And just to give us a general status update on the forecast for our neck of the woods, as well as the tropical weather outlook. So a uh, good morning to you, uh, Mr. Joyer, Andrew Joyer, director of, of the Med Services. Morning. Hi, good morning morning thank you so much for uh, uh calling in we really do appreciate it uh, first of all if you could just give us a, a general um outlook as to what is happening in our uh, part of the world right now okay well um we have a number of tropical storms and hurricanes and depressions all around us um but we've been lucky so far that um, none of them are projected to affect us at this time Okay, and uh, talk to us about what was experienced yesterday, just yesterday. Okay, um, well, we had the intertropical convergence zone. Um, uh, it moved slightly northward and it affected us. And it was a strange phenomenon because the, we went for scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms, but the um, cloudiness act was actually over the center of the island. So we had rainfall for the entire morning affecting the center of the island. So rivers that has the headwaters um, close to the center of the island were affected. So we had flash flooding around the island. We ha barely had any rainfall because um, when I checked the records, Hiranora and George Charles had actually nil rainfall for that period. But then the center was, you know, flooded. So we had um, rivers overflowing their banks and persons were surprised because no rainfall. We actually had um, the hottest temperature recorded. It, it um, eclipsed the um, previous record. It's similar, 33.5 degrees Celsius on Sunday, uh, the 14th. We at, that was recorded at um, George, uh, sorry, Hiranor Airport. So okay. we had very hot temperatures around the island and we had rainfall in the center. That's, that's rather interesting, yes. um, but we know that's all part of weather. You really can't um, put your finger on it. Uh, talk to us about Tropical Storm Teddy. Uh, trop that tropical storm, uh, that tropical depression uh, had strengthened. Uh, give us an update as to where it is at right now. Okay, Teddy is located um, in the center of the Atlantic Ocean. Um, 
it is presently a tropical storm and is expected to become a hurricane by Tuesday. Um, on the projected path, it is supposed to pass north of the islands, the entire island chain, and is not expected to make landfall at this time or on the projected path. Okay. And even within that, um, that, that space, uh, we certainly need to be prepared for any eventuality. Yes, it only takes one. There are actually um, two other areas of interest. Um, one that we're keeping an eye on, it's just coming off the African coast. So right now they actually have about six systems in our area. Okay. If, uh, sir, you could just uh, issue an appeal as we wrap up uh, to the general public to continue. I know uh, we have been... Uh, the COVID-19 situation continues to eclipse other uh, island matters. But if you could just reinforce the point of us being prepared in every way, our homes, our businesses, our property, uh, during the Atlantic hurricane season. Okay. At the beginning, we were told that uh, the, this 2020 would be a very active season, and it has proven to be so. Right now, we are on T. And there is only two more, um, V and W, Vicky and Wilfred, left on the list. It's a 21 name list, and we are expecting to exceed that 21 names um, because we are in September and you still have two months to go. So we are asking persons to be very vigilant. We will, um, we are expecting persons, since it's a very active hurricane season, that they would have taken the necessary precautions and the predictions are proven right and it only takes one to affect us and cause damage okay before you leave just for the curious public the viewership right now what happens when the uh, met experts exhaust the alphabet uh okay. in, in terms of naming where do they go from there yes that, this happened in 2005 and what ha when they completed the 21 names, they went into the Greek alphabet. So we would be using alpha, beta, kappa, yeah. okay. and the likes. Thank you very much for your time this morning. I really do appreciate it. I, I know I called you on short notice for this quick update. I do really appreciate the time that you have given us. Well, it's like do enjoy the, the rest of it, <laughs> Mr. Joyer. Thank you very much. It's <laughs> bye my bye. pleasure. Okay. Well, that rounds up uh, our morning update for you. This has been another episode of the Morning Brew. The updates coming from the Department of Health and Wellness, the Ministry of Commerce on the refined, the, the, the bad batches of coconut oil refunds. Uh, also, the uh, continued work of Invest St. Lucia promoting economic progress through land development and delivering on its goal slowly but surely of creating 600 new landowners in various communities island-wide. Uh, we have also the rehabilitation works uh, at uh, the sporting facilities in the Miku area nearing completion and also the continued admonition from the Ministry of Health and Wellness as we observe Suicide Prevention Month this September uh, to play their part. If you see something wrong with a family member, a friend, a loved one, do say something, do reach out because you know it, it's those simple things that can mean life or death. So please take note of that. My name is Jesse Leon signing off for now. We do hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And we do hope today is off to a wonderful start to a productive and fun week. Yeah. Uh, again, Jesse Leon signing off for now. Do enjoy the rest of uh, today. Uh, this has been another episode of The Morning Brew. Do stay with us for more NTN programming. Goodbye.